Hello everyone out there in YouTube world. Thanks for tuning in to the Rideshare Hub. I'm Jacob Letman. We've got a great video in store for you today. Something very near and dear to my heart. Something I'm passionate about. Before we get started with that, however, have you guys heard of this cool thing called Play Octopus for rideshare drivers? So here's the deal. As a rideshare driver, if you give at least 100 rides a month, you qualify to do this, and you can make up to an extra $100 a month. And uh, so basically the deal is, you sign up, you get this free tablet that's packed full of fun games for your passengers to play, including mostly trivia games. Um, you keep it in your vehicle, they play it while you're driving, you earn some money. Uh, so here's what you, you do. Uh, it's not nationwide yet, but it's going to be rolling out nationwide soon. So go into the video description below. There's a link there. You can click it, check it out. Even if you it's not in your city yet, you can sign up, join the waiting list. Use our promo code RideShareHub. Made it easy on you guys. And uh, yeah, and then when you when you get it, you know you get that tablet. If you don't like talking to your passengers, this is perfect. Right? Gives them something to do or gives you guys something to banter back and forth about. You can try and solve trivia together. All right. Play Octopus. Okay. Hey, so here's what I want to speak with you guys about today. And that is, realistically, how much can Uber and Lyft drivers expect to be able to afford for rent? And uh, it's important because we all have to live. And... This is something that I'm very passionate about because, um, well, why? Okay, so here's the deal. So I have an associate's degree in business management, and I also have a bachelor's degree in communications. And uh, I put myself through college with a, a small partial golf scholarship. I was a resident assistant for three years. I announced sports um, for our university. Uh, I worked on campus doing various things, all those things so that I could put myself through college. I played on the golf team for four years. I was captain for three years. Um, honestly, I've never worked as hard in my life as I did then. It was like get up at 6 a.m. and work until 2 in the morning. Uh, and that's not a joke. And I'm lucky I survived. But anyway, uh, point being, I know what it's like to work hard for little return and then after I graduated college um, I got a production assistant job working at a news station in Billings Montana uh, making ten dollars an hour to start out with and I had two roommates and uh, so I started out as a production assistant ten dollars an hour um, and then I told him, I was like, hey, you guys, look, I can do the sports reporting, I can do the sports anchoring. They had two full-time sports guys, so they didn't have another full-time position to hire me for. Uh, but they're like, oh, okay, well, let's see what he's got. So they started to roll me out having me do sports stories, and then I filled in as an anchor, uh, and then they started to use me more and more, which, and they didn't up my pay at all. And so after about eight months, I'm like, hey, look, you guys, I'm doing all this more work. I'm on the freaking news, live news, as an anchor, making ten dollars an hour. And true story, they were hiring. They were paying twelve dollars an hour at Taco Bell at that same time. Freaking talk about injustice. Um, so, like I said, I had two other roommates, and I was losing money, making ten dollars an hour, living in Billings, Montana. Um. So I know what it's like to grind, to try and make it through. I was living off credit cards. And finally, I was like, fine, if you guys aren't going to pay me, I'm going elsewhere. So I moved out to Southern California. Uh, I took a full-time golf teaching position, which I made 50000 a year, which you think is a lot. It is compared to $10 an hour, but not really when you're living in Southern California. Um, and so... so cost of living there is extremely high uh, if you're not aware so then I decided hey okay this is okay but what I'm really passionate about is entertainment industry acting 
Um, I actually have a dual uh, degree in theater and communications. So technically I have three degrees. Um, and then, so I started taking acting classes, Southern California. And, uh, and then I wanted, I got picked up by an agent. I wanted to start acting, pursuing that because I couldn't working full time teaching golf. So I said, Hey, okay, I'm going to, I'll drive ride share. That'll help me pay my expenses. And then I can pursue acting. And, uh, I've been able to make it work. It's been a grind and it's some, this topic is something I'm so passionate about because I know how hard it is to grind and to make ends meet and we all just want a better quality of life. I think a, there's a lot of drivers out there. Um, well, there are a lot of drivers out there that I know personally that started driving because they hated their corporate environment and they were like, I just wanted to, I didn't want to have to report to a boss and ask for time off and you know, there's pros and cons of, of all different positions, right? There's pros and cons to this for sure. Um, and so with that, right, we saw an influx in all these new rideshare drivers for Uber and Lyft. However, this is also why there's been picketing and s strikes from drivers. It's because we're doing this and we're working hard and we're using our vehicle and we just want to get paid enough to adequately live on. And I promise this is coming full circle to the topic of rent uh, because rent is a huge part of that, right? Rent is equates for on average a third. Actually, in a lot of places, it equates to more of like half of people's income. Uh, I just looked at a Forbes report that was done over a span of years and to live comfortably on average across the US, you need to make at least $17 and I think 20 cents an hour for a one bedroom apartment. Let that sink in, right? We're talking about trying to raise minimum wage to $15 an hour. To live in a modest, not in a luxury, in a modest one bedroom apartment average nationwide $17.20. And to live in a two bedroom apartment, you got to make over $20 an hour. It was like, I want to say it was like 22 or something dollars an hour. That's an issue. That's an issue um, for sure. And so before we talk numbers on what you can expect realistically uh, to be able to afford for rent as a rideshare driver, um, I encourage all of you and implore you all to really keep track of your hours that you drive, what your gross income is, so that you can figure out your hourly gross income, and then pay close attention to all of your expenses, track those things, uh, your gas, your car maintenance, you know, tires, oil change, um, everything, all your expenses and your car depreciation. We have videos going over how to calculate car depreciation. Um, all of that's so important so you can figure out what your net earnings are and, uh, and then taxes as well. We got to pay taxes, right? Cause that doesn't come out. So pay close attention to that so you can figure out what you're really making an hour, making hourly. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. And one of the issues one of the issues that works in favor of Uber and Lyft is that there's such an ebb and flow and inconsistencies to earnings that there are times that you can make like they say standard like 30 an hour, which is true. But again, that's before expenses. If you had surges and stuff and tips and things like that, you can make some good money sometimes, but you can also have really low points. And uh, I digress. Let's talk about numbers here, you guys. So, um, so if you make, so I've got three sets of numbers here, and uh, and it's a, I think it's a good spread. So one of the pros, let me back up. So if you're going into a new apartment complex, right, trying to move in, doesn't matter if you have ten thousand, twenty thousand, fifty thousand dollars in your bank account you still have to be able to prove that you make at least three times 
your income is at least three times the amount of rent per month. Okay, so simple terms, if your rent's $1,000 a month, you have to prove that you make $3,000 a month. I recently went through this. They asked for four months, four months of proof of income. And uh, again, that's another issue. That's one of the tough things about rideshare driving is because, well, we are our own bosses. We make our own hours. Sometimes we don't drive as much. Sometimes we drive more. Um, sometimes we make more. Sometimes we make less. So proving that three times... Um, three times or that your income is three times the amount of rent each month can be a difficulty I was gone in August uh, this past year I was up back home or more like half of July half of August whatever uh, visiting and so my income was lower for that month and it became a discrepancy I had to battle it out with uh, my apartment complex and provide them with an extra you know three or four months of proof of income to prove that I do make enough just to get into my apartment complex, which freaking crazy, right? Now, one of the pros that we have as being independent contractors is that our gross income is what goes into our account. So uh, whereas someone working as an employee, they take out social security, taxes ahead of time, so you're left with your net income um, that goes into your, your bank statement. Um, okay, so now let's talk talk numbers, right? So if you made $15 an hour, 40 hours a week, that would be $600 a week, uh, $2,400 a month, a third of that is $800 a month. So at least in my area, I can't even get a one bedroom apartment for $800 a month. You can in some of the, the lower income areas which um, are also have higher crime rates and uh, nothing against that at all. I'm just, it's just facts. Uh, not nicer apartments, not updated. So at $15 an hour, you can pay, you can afford to pay $800 uh, a month in rent. And that's, uh, and you certainly can't get a two bedroom apartment on that. Okay, so let's up it to $17.50 an hour. Uh, 40 hours a week, that's $2,800 a month. And a third of that is $933 uh, that you could afford to pay for rent. Now, to give you some perspective on this, I was living in Southern California when I started rideshare driving, acting. Um, I was living in a two-bedroom apartment. I had two girl roommates. They split one of the bedrooms. I had the other bedroom. And our base rent there, are you ready for this? Drum roll, please. Was $2,100 a month. That's before electricity and internet. So... 1050 a month was my share. We'll say electricity and internet. We'll just round up to $1,100 a month. Couldn't afford it, just driving rideshare. Uh, fortunately, I have other things, you know, going, acting jobs and stuff, but it was a freaking super grind, and that's 40 hours a week. And if I'm pursuing acting and out there going to auditions, if I don't land some of those acting jobs, I'm done, you know? And, uh, oh man, so stressful stuff, um, for sure. So let's see, fortunately, actually the only way that we were able to even get into apartment complex ahead of time is that I had super good credit and I was, um, making that 50 K working at golf tech. So I had that proof of income before we got into, our new place and then that's when I transitioned. So we wouldn't have even been able to get into where we we're getting into um, most likely. All right, so then let's do this. Let's bump it up, $20 an hour, which if you're consistently making $20 an hour driving rideshare, kudos to you, you're doing stuff right uh, because that's the exception, not the rule. 
There are definitely times that we all make at least $20 an hour, but there are definitely all times where we're not making that. Um, I would say for the majority of drivers nationwide, not talking San Francisco. You guys are in a different place, different level of living expenses and what you're earning. Uh, so at $20 an hour, 40 hours a week, that's $800 a week, um, $3,200 a month. A third of that is $1,066 uh, that you would be able to afford for rent. So to give you another perspective, I now live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, fortunately, I have my girlfriend's income to help. Our one-bedroom apartment, which is right in line with what one-bedroom apartments start at here, $1,400 a month. So me, as a single guy, if I was to try and get an apartment here by myself, I could not afford that. I would have to go elsewhere. Forget about a two-bedroom apartment. So really this is not about rights or wrongs or anything. It's about loading you with information um, so that you can figure out realistically how much you need to be working, what you need to be making an hour to be able to get into uh, an apartment um, where you live. And so let's do this, you guys. Let's do this because knowledge is power, power for all of us and uh, I like to have a dialogue about this kind of stuff. Why don't you jump down in the comment section below. Let us know the city that you drive in, um, how much you pay in rent per month, um, if you feel like you're easily making enough money to cover your living expenses or how you feel about the income that you make uh, driving rideshare and Furthermore, if you have really tracked those numbers on what you're making an hour and done the math to figure out what your net takeaway is, so after expenses, what you're making an hour, hit us with that. We would love to uh, get that information. I just want to see it across the board, see where everyone stands. All right, you guys, that's what I have for you today. I'm Jacob Letman. This is the Rideshare Hub. If you liked this video, took something away from it, I'd appreciate a big thumbs up. And uh, until the next time, drive safe out there, everybody.